out there nerd tubers and geek viewers of the world miss dark phoenix right here is back with batman superman and spider-man bringing you guys my review of jessica jones now whoo this show is something else let me just say first off in this review i am not going to mention daredevil at all because a lot of people are saying oh in comparison to daredevil oh daredevil this daredevil that Jessica Jones is not Daredevil. She is the B in Apartment 23. She is the girl who corrupted Jesse in Breaking Bad. And then she choked to death or vomit. But I'll explain more about that later on. Um, Jessica Jones, when I first reacted to the trailer and said it was a psychological thriller, I was absolutely right. Jessica Jones is a psychological thriller starring Jessica Jones in her quest to escape from the captivity of somebody, the Purple Man, uh, I believe David Tennant, who can control people with his mind. He's basically, he's basically uh, has manipulation abilities. And for the most part, oh, this is going to be spoilers, by the way. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. If you haven't seen Jessica Jones, come back when you have. And if you have seen it, just jump around in to Jessica Jones. Um, this story is really dark. It covers uh, addiction. It covers... Stockholm Syndrome, it covers rape possibly because it's just so much out there that Purple Man has done to Jessica Jones. She spends her time running a PI firm. She's a private investigator in Hell's Kitchen and she does a lot of stuff, you know, oh my husband or wife is cheating on me, help me prove it. Click, click, here you go. Didn't like what you saw, well too bad as you hired me for. Her lawyer friend, powerful lawyer friend, who happens to be a lesbian, which is really cool, is also someone that hires her for her unorthodox ways of getting information and getting stuff done but so later on down the series we're introduced to Luke Cage yay A oh, aka Dark Hunter told me my friend uh, you guys have seen him on this channel earlier he's been my cameraman for all of New York Comic Con he texts me because he's watching it also so I had to be careful what I say but he texts me and tells me, oh, it's Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Unbreakable Dildo. And I was like... I died laughing first off, because that's really freaking true. They have super sex. It's like... It's like an unbreakable object meets an object that can take it with the endurance. And I'm like, wow. They deserve this. You're just watching a sex scene like this, like you're trying to like intricately like <laughs> figure it out like, yep. They deserve this. They deserve to go all out on each other. Her and Luke Cage's relationship is portrayed really well because it's like, oh yeah, they 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 screw around a lot. But then they catch feelings. But Jessica Jones has to like put him to the side because we find out that she killed his that she killed his wife by certain misinterpretation expectation. But because it's like he because. At one point, um, Jessica Jones decides to go with Purple Man back to her old house. And he and he, she yells at him. She's like, you made me kill her. He was like, I told you to finish her off. I never said kill her. And I was like, huh. You know, that's oddly, horribly, kind of true. You took it upon yourself to super punch her in the chest. But all in all, also speaking about Purple Man, Mr. David Tennant there, Mr. Doctor. From Doctor Who. Who thought you had this in you to make me believe, to have me scared of you as the Purple Man? Throughout the series, it's all about Jessica's inner demon battle to say that she's finally over his control and to say, hey, I'm my own person, while she drinks a lot, but that's fine. Tony Stark drinks too. Oh my god, they should have a Jessica Jones and Tony Stark drinking match when they finally meet up in Infinity War. But... The show covers a lot of dark corners in our little Marvel world, and I'm actually proud of them for making this. Because like I said, this is not Daredevil. Each show is going to be different. Each show is going to have its own thing, its own stuff compared to it. It's not going to be able to be compared to anything else out there right now. 
They, they sure as hell couldn't put Jessica Jones on ABC with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So Netflix is that network where they can go all out and not worry about anything. But we captured Purple Man sometimes. We lose him a couple more times. We catch him. We find out that he was experimented on by his parents. We bring his parents on the show, which is even worse because he hates them for what, he, for what they did to him. And it just becomes a never-ending cycle of violence and murder. And a lot of stuff that I really didn't think that Marvel would cover. Like, I didn't think Marvel would have the balls, first off, to do all this kind of stuff. And I'm really proud of the kind of show that Jessica Jones has turned out to be. Even toward the end, where, you know, we find out that Jessica Jones can't be controlled by him anymore. We find out that he wants more of the serum that made him who he was because he wants to control her. It's a sick love obsession. It's like senpai, notice me, kind of stuff. And we find out towards the end that he can't control her no matter what he does, which is what I, which is where the, where it's, which is where the Stockholm syndrome comes in, because it's like Jessica has finally faced her demons. She's finally able to say, I am no longer in your control, and I'm going to take you out here and there. <laughs> Dead. Kills his ass. The only thing from Daredevil that I will mention is that I said Rosario Dawson showed up. I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, holy crap, they're in a hospital. And I was like, are they going to do what I think they're going to do? And then, boom, Rosario Dawson shows up. She helps Jessica Jones from knowing her for like five minutes, which is the kind of person that I believe Rosario, Rosario Dawson is. Because they try and give Luke Cage a shot, but they can't, because his skin's unbreakable. So they can't do that. And, you know, she helps her as well. And, you know, it's like, oh, I, oh, I have this friend. If you want, I can, I can have him help. And she was like, I don't want to get anybody else involved. And I'm like, damn it! Involve Charlie Cox! But, like I said, this show covered a lot of stuff that I didn't think was possible. Um, all in all... This show was binge-worthy. I binged it. I was on one of those binge-benders where I was like, I don't need sleep. I need answers. I really enjoyed the show. Uh, her powers are portrayed correctly. One complaint that I heard was that they downgraded Luke Cage and Jessica Jones, and I'm like, really? This is their first time on TV. They're not going to show how powerful they really are unless they have to. It's their own little Netflix shows, and fine. You downgrade them a little bit, because that's storytelling. If they're in Infinity War, where they got to deal with Thanos and everybody else, then that's when you like crank up the value, and we got to get them at full power. But I give this show a solid A. I really do. I loved it. I highly recommend it. It's the kind of show where you have to go into it knowing that it's more of a psychological drama. Yeah, there's fight scenes. Yeah, there's action, but... It's more dark storytelling. Supernatural dark storytelling more than anything. And Marvel did a great job with it. And I couldn't be happier. I couldn't have enjoyed it more. I'm actually probably going to watch it again because I'm going to get my mom and my grandma to watch it too. Because we all watch Daredevil. So I'm going to get them involved in that. Um, the only little tiny complaint that I have, little nitbit is that Charlie Cox didn't show up. I kept hearing that he was going to cameo in Jessica Jones, but I guess not, which is fine. You want to have them stand on their own two feet. There really was no reason for him to show up anyway, if you really think about it. Because, like, it, there really was no reason. But we got Rosario Dawson, so I'm really happy about that. So I couldn't complain about that. Uh, the next show on the Marvel list is Luke Cage, because Luke Cage disappears at the end of Jessica Jones to do God knows what. But I can't wait to see that. What did you guys think about Jessica Jones? Comment down below and let me know. I can't wait to see what else they do with all the other shows. And I can't wait for them to show up in the big universe. Because they are going to... Because they ever, everyone's connected. It's like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the movies, and the Netflix world. They're all the Iron Triangle. It's just the point of putting them together. But... What did you guys think about Jessica Jones? I enjoyed it. I loved it a lot. It's one of those kinds of shows that has a slow start of sorts, but once you keep watching, once you keep watching, you will not be disappointed. I promise you guys that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Comment down below, rate, subscribe, share with all your awesome friends, and always remember that through good times and bad times, remember to geek out and enjoy your lives, and I'll catch you guys next time for another great video.